but you tender. Maneuver through the sewer, staying low like a fender. Chopper kid game, spin your block like a blender. And fuck that sucker shit, all times is getting seven. Didn't squeeze when you see him, we gon' strip you for your weather. And fuck that forecast, we make it rain on whoever. You capping up with pussy, what you say I do it better. I ain't hating on the net, I'm just trying to run a check. In the field, quarterback is sending bullets. Hey, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling a blessing like I always say. It's one live, one chance. When they got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. With that being said, another video, man. I'm, I'm just coming back to back. I'm receiving a lot of content. I got a lot of, a lot of videos up uh, coming soon, soon to come. Y'all stay tuned, man, and show me this, as much of support as possible. As you can see from the thumbnail, yeah, just came across this information, so I wanted to be the first to dive right in and divulge this information to my audience, to my subscribers, and entertain you guys to the best of my ability. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment, and check the links in the description so you can check out my news music. Down the Ride is going to be hitting platforms very, very soon, and I got Money Route coming pretty soon and along with a couple other songs. Let's get right into it. This just happened today, right? A big bust happened in, in South Carolina. Now, I'm from California. I know, you know, certain information about certain states around me, but I don't know jack diddly shit about South Carolina other than it's a state, South Carolina. Believe it or not, a, a, a drug ring was busted by the, you know, the FBI and, you know, the, the South Carolina police, whatever police department, whatever city it resonates from. But they busted this big methamphetamine drug ring that was being done in the in South Carolina prisons by inmates. 43 people were indicted and charged. And out of these 43 people, you'll be surprised that a lot of them had, had connections to the Mexican drug cartels in Sinaloa. The new one. The, the one that El Mencho always gets referred to, you know, at... Uh, Generacion, but it's Jalisco. What it was, it was a lot of these inmates were purchasing cell phones. And from what the cops were saying, they, the most expensive was like $3,500 they were purchasing to have uh, correctional officers and other people smuggle in these cell phones so they can conduct this network between South Carolina inmates and uh, their connections to the streets along with the drug cartels down over there in Mexico. And we're talking about these inmates managed to smuggle in 25 kilos of methamphetamine from the streets. Methamphetamine that was transported from Mexico, landed in South Carolina. And from then on, the network that was created actually was able to distribute and smuggle 25 kilos of methamphetamine within the penal system to these inmates. You know how much money that is? Think about it. An ounce is 28 grams. Out of that 28 grams, I'll take one gram. I could sell that street gram in prison. You know, you know, prison prices differentiate from prison to prison or, you know, out of state. Who knows? But like I said, in California, one prison gram, I could sell it for 250 300 a street prison gram. I mean, a street gram. But if I cut that street gram in half, I make two prison grams. I could sell each one of those for $200. Or I could take those two prison grams and cut them in fours and sell each fourth for $100. So that's $800 I made off two prison grams. So imagine that. And do that with every gram in an ounce 28 times. 25. We're talking about 25 kilos of methamphetamine that was smuggled into the prison system by drug cartels. And trust me, when you find out that actually the actual gang leaders, the actual ring leaders of this, it's going to blow your mind. And I can't wait to tell you. Altogether, 170 people, uh, there was 170 charges brought against, you know, 43 people. And, they, and some of them actually were able to flee the scene and actually fled to Mexico and are in hiding with the Jalisco drug cartel right now as we speak. And this is the part that's going to blow your mind, is that this group that actually orchestrated this drug ring to smuggle in methamphetamine from the streets, trafficking methamphetamine from Atlanta to South Carolina back and forth and into the prison system out there were all women. And the FBI decided to name this group, uh, they, they called this subgroup or this group of particular individuals called 
las señoritas. Why? Because they were all women that were actually orchestrating each and every networking and foot soldier that was transporting the drugs from Mexico all the way to South Carolina, to Atlanta, and infiltrating the penal, the penal systems to get the drugs and the cell phones in to make a substantial amount of money. And when I say substantial, I mean a lot because everything that's off the streets that gets brought into the penal system, we're talking about the prices quadruple, multi-quadruple. Think about it, man. A cell phone out here, you know, we can get a government phone for free and sell it in the penal system for two, three thousand dollars. We get a regular phone out here for a couple hundred bucks, sell it to the penal system for two, three thousand dollars. And inmates will buy it because inmates know they're going to get that money back in return. And a, and, a, and, a, and a lot, and a lot more than what they paid. For. The women, the names that were involved, right? And I have to read them to you because kind of made me kind of like, uh, like I don't want to be prejudgmental, but Mexican drug cartels, you would have thought señoras, señoritas, would it be Mexicanas, but trip out on the names. The names kind of kind of throw me off a little bit. White girl alert. You hear her laughing? Why are you laughing? See, she's laughing because she's like, yeah, white girls did that. We did that. <laughs> Anyways, the, the women that were uh, that are, are pretty much under indictment as we speak is Chelsea Marie Anderson, Jennifer Nicole Burns, and Amy Diana Cobb, a.k.a. La Emma. If those names don't sound white to you, I don't know what does, bro, because... I ain't never met a, a, a Chicano or Mexicano with the last name Anderson. But they're set. See, she, she's laughing because she, when she heard this story, she was like, she was having a proud moment. Like, yeah, white girls, we do that too, man. Don't underestimate the white girl. All this crazy stuff, right? And I'm like. It's your facial expressions that you're making. Yeah, whatever. So anyways, as I'm reading this article and I read these names, I jot them down and I'm. I'm, I'm going over my head, like, and I tell my girl, like, man, these are white girls, bro. They have to be white girls. But then I seen the pictures. I looked them up on Google and seen the pictures. They're white. They're white. But one of them, particularly, she's actually married to a Mexican drug cartel member. And that's where the plug and the, the establishment of, of trafficking drugs from the border to South Carolina, from South Carolina. It doesn't really articulate very well as to how they got connections and gang connections within the penal system to start smuggling in methamphetamine and, and fentanyl and everything else in the penal system. We all pretty much know, you know, sometimes it's a friend or a family member and we establish ties, we establish communication. And we everybody knows that anything on the streets, if you, as long as you can get it in the penal system, your money's gonna quadruple. It's gonna multiply in, in, in the multitudes when it comes to money. What we, we, what we pay for out here for 50 bucks, can we can sell it in there for 500 bucks. Think about it. So, you know, it's, it sucks that, you know, it's bad enough we got corporate America and these private owners that you already monetize and capitalize and monopolize off, you know, us as inmates, as pe people as inmates. And they make a profit of people returning to jail, people doing life in prison, so on and so forth. But then you got society in itself looking at it like, well, you know, since they're already busted, Let's just make money off them as well. Since, you know, corporate America and white America is already doing it, we can make money off of themselves. Instead of out here doing all the footwork, standing on street corners and going out, you know, doing drop-offs and pickups and driving to somebody's house and meeting somebody here at a at a quick stop or are we corner clocking. Hey, let's just drop it off in the pen, you know, wait our time and get it back in some, which I totally agree because I used to do it myself and I have a lot of prison stories, a lot of encounters of me smuggling in drugs, me smuggling in cell phones, so on and so forth. So I understand the margin of profit that they can gain by grabbing this particular amount of dope and sending it to an inmate in jail and letting him make his money. You know, you're going to have a lot of prison inmates who are going to be pretty much drug kingpins in prison that's going to accumulate a lot of money, power, and resources. So you, you put these men in that are inmates that have nothing else to look forward to that are sitting in a cell that just want that opportunity to be somebody or live for something. You give them an opportunity to prosper and expand and, and become very political and very powerful in there. But the money comes right back outside. So now I think the Mexican cartels, they, they got smart enough to say, you know what, we're going to infiltrate the penal system. 
Because that's where the real cash cow is at. That's where the really cash flow is really at. That's where the money is at. But to smuggle in 25 kilos of methamphetamine, that is a lot. That's an abundance of drugs, and that's an abundance of people in a cell just like, you know, all weirded out. You know, you know, it's queer juice. You know, that's what we call the meth in, in jail is queer juice because dubs will tell you about it. You know, just people act a little funny and a little ticklish in certain areas when they're off that drug. But just wanted to run this by you. This, this bus just happened recently, so it's breaking news. But trip out. They named a group. And the women, they're all missing right now. They're all left in hiding. They all fled to Mexico, which was fascinating to me that they named this group Las Señoritas. If you guys want, Google it it'll, and look up images on Google and you'll see the pictures of these women and their, and their, their mug shots. White girls did that. Not sounding racist, but the white girls did that. And uh, right now, as we speak, my girl's having her little proud moment. So she's walking around like she runs the house right now, like she's the cartela. Like she's the reina del sur. So with that being said, man, I hope you guys like my video. I just wanted to bring the information to you firsthand. I got more videos to come. With that being said, it's one life, one chance. When I got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.